Today I'm going to be reviewing a speaker that I think is pretty badass. It's the Arendal 1528 Monitor 8. When this speaker first hit the market, everybody was like, oh my God, that's the best thing ever. Like even my friends. And I was like, oh my goodness. It's just the marketing hype, right? But I got to say that I really do like these speakers and the objective data really backs up a lot of what I heard and explains why I like this speaker. It has really good linearity. It has tremendous SPL capability. And frankly, I think it's a good looking speaker. So with that said, let's start off this review. These retail for about $5,900 USD for a pair. It is a three-way design, stands approximately 32 inches tall, and you will need a specific stand for this. Or in my case, what I did was I used a pair of center blocks, one for each speaker, and then cover them up with the slip bag that came with the speaker. Weight is approximately 104 pounds each or 47 kilograms for you in the non-United States. The enclosure can be sealed or ported, but it does come with a bung that you stuff the port in the back with to make it sealed. Enclosure material is hard density fiberboard, which makes this thing stupid heavy. It features a 28 millimeter tweeter, a five inch mid range and two eight inch mid base drivers with a nominal impedance of about four ohms and a spec sensitivity of about 85 decibels. For my subjective listening, I played around with different aiming and different position off the wall. And I will say that if you use these in ported configuration, you're going to want to bring them pretty far off the wall. They get down quite low and you almost don't need a subwoofer. Almost, unless you want really low bass, let's say 40 hertz and below. These do get down to around 35 hertz or so in most rooms, but you will want to supplement that if you want really low bass. If you put these speakers too close to the wall in their port configuration, you're going to get a lot of boominess. So I do recommend that you use the port bung and stuff it back in there to seal up that port if you want to put the speakers closer to the wall. As far as aiming, typically I start off with aiming the speaker directly at me and then I play around with towing them out. Now I landed at about 10 degrees toe out. So instead of the speakers pointed directly at you, they're kind of angled slightly off axis away from your ears or maybe kind of pointing behind your head. In doing so, I felt like I've met a good balance between stereo width and overall linearity. The downside to the speaker, the only one that really I could find is that there is a small dip in the mid bass region around 100 Hertz. In my listening, what I like to do is I like to compare it to a known reference. I use Audio First Fidelia kit speaker as my known reference. And while it cannot get loud, it's a great tonality check. So listening to these speakers side by side in mono configuration, it was apparent that the Arendal was missing this mid bass region and it took out the chestiness of male vocals. That was the most apparent thing. Having said that, it's not to the degree that some speakers I've reviewed as of late have. As I said before, the stereo width of the speaker is really quite nice. It's around plus or minus 60 degrees horizontally. And for me, that's kind of the sweet spot. Now there is a bit of a flare in the upper mid range, lower treble region, where I believe that some absorption on the sidewalls will help the overall smoothness and neutrality of the speaker. Without some absorption, what you might run into is a little bit of forwardness in the upper mid range. This too was noticeable side by side with my reference speaker, but again, it wasn't to the point where it was a problem. It's just something that you may want to take note of. If you're a home theater enthusiast, one of the things that you need to pay attention to is the dynamic capability and distortion of a speaker. Now I listen pretty loud most of the time. So for me, home theater loudness and home stereo loudness, eh, they're kind of the same. But if you are specifically interested in knowing how loud the speaker can play, you will be pleasantly surprised to find that these speakers can play very loud. They have extremely low distortion and extremely low compression. And in fact, in these two regards, they're some of the best speakers that I've tested, certainly at this price and even besting speakers that cost maybe twice as much as this. So my overall summary in terms of subjective take is that these speakers are pretty badass and I would have no problem recommending them. Now let's move on to the objective portion, but before we do that, I'm going to provide you with a sound clip. Now you're listening for the difference in the original pink noise versus the convolved sound clip or speaker version of the pink noise. The more difference that you hear, the more difference that the speaker itself imparts upon the signal. And you'll notice in this case, there's not much of a difference at all. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's hit some of the highlights of the data. This is the frequency response. You can see the measured sensitivity is at about 84.4 decibels. F3 is at 41 hertz and F10 is at 26 hertz. Anechoic data shows good base extension, but you see this dip right through here. This is that mid base punch that I was missing. Here is the CEA 2034 data set. And looking at the directivity down here, it looks pretty good, but there is some diffraction right around 2K that causes the directivity to shift a little bit right between one and a half kilohertz to two kilohertz. This is gonna be the area where you're gonna have a little bit widening of the mid range, the upper mid range, and why you may wanna use absorption panels on the sidewalls. And we'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. There are a couple minor resonances I wanna call attention to because they exist, not because you can hear them, but because to be fair to everything I review, I wanna call attention to them. Now, this particular one around 400 hertz, so high in Q and so low in amplitude, not gonna be audible. This one right here around 800 hertz is wider in Q, higher in amplitude, but it's negative amplitude, right? So are you gonna hear a dip in response more than you'll hear a peak in response? No, the dip won't stand out like a peak would. And since it's a dip, it didn't stand out to me as something that was obvious. The estimated in-room response, and just a couple notes. So you can see the in-room extensions to about 35 Hertz. There is a two decibel base dip. There's slightly forward, which may add some attack around one and a half K, but the high frequency also looks very smooth. It's not bright, shrill, or sharp. If you're coming from a speaker that has elevated high frequency that you term as resolution or detail, then this speaker is not gonna sound that same way. But personally, I would much rather have this than a boost to high frequency. Burst decay shows some mid-range decay around 500 hertz and around one kilohertz. Uh, they're relatively low in level, so I don't know that they're anything to get too concerned about. The horizontal contour plot gives us an idea of the radiation characteristics. How smooth is the sound? As you go from one side to the other speaker, does it track pretty much the same or same the same, sound the same uh, in tonality? And in this particular case of this speaker, yeah, it mostly does. However, there is this flaring, as I mentioned earlier, around two kilohertz. Some sidewall absorption would help some of that. It would capture some of that additional energy that's going off to the side that isn't coming directly at you. Is it necessary? Not really, but that does add that little bit of forwardness to the speaker. But really it's so minor that I don't know that I would go out of my way to resolve this particular issue. Now, when we talk about the listening axis vertically, you wanna put your ears between the tweeter and the mid-range below it, as I've shown you in this illustration. And if we take that point as your reference axis, then this speaker has about plus or minus 20 degrees of vertical radiation, where you should be okay, especially if you wanna maybe reposition yourself or you've got multiple row seating in your home theater and you wanna make sure that the people behind you can hear something similar to what you're hearing on your front row. Harmonic distortion at 86 decibels, 96 decibels, and for kicks, 102 decibels. These are extremely low. Multitone distortion, also extremely low. Multitone compression for 30 second durations, which is considered long-term compression, extremely low. You see a theme here? And then short-term dynamic compression, extremely low. For amplifier power, I definitely suggest you use a four ohm capable amplifier. If you do use a class AB amplifier, make sure that it will be able to drive a four ohm load without any issue because the EPDR dips down to about 1.9 ohm in two different spots. And if you use this speaker full range, then you're gonna probably run into some heating issues. So keep that in mind. Now, if you use a class D amplifier, then you're probably gonna be okay. So that does it for this review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to ask them in the comments section below. Cheap plug for myself, okay? If you plan to buy this speaker, I have an affiliate link for Arendal's website. I'm gonna put it in the description below. If you hate affiliate links, and if you think that I'm shilling the product, hey, take comfort in seeing all this free available data for you, okay? But hopefully what it does is it helps you make a better purchase decision. And if you decide you wanna buy this speaker, then please help me out by using my affiliate link. If you wanna buy something else, that's fine. I might have an affiliate link for that. I've got generic affiliate links for Amazon, Crutchfield, Best Buy, et cetera, et cetera. And you can find those here. So no matter what you wanna buy, you just click one of those generic links and you can go buy that thing. Again, that stuff really helps me and that's how I'm able to keep doing this. Lately, nobody's using them. So I'm kind of like prodding you a little bit more. Hey, if you don't mind for any of those generic ones, please keep that in mind. I really appreciate it. 
Now, speaking of that, I do want to quickly mention a couple speakers. The MoFi SourcePoint Triple Eight is another competitor to this speaker at about $5,000 per pair retail. Now, the MoFi, one big advantage is that it has a wider vertical sweet spot. So if you have a multi-row seating home theater, or if you like to stand up and walk around, that MoFi vertically has a much wider sweet spot at about plus or minus 60 degrees, where these are closer to about maybe plus or minus 20 degrees. The other aspect about the MoFi that I like is that it does have more linear bays down to lower frequencies, and it also has low distortion like the Arendal. Now, the difference in sound that you're gonna notice between the MoFi and the Arendal that I'm talking about here is that the Arendal might sound a little bit more forward in the upper mid range, but it's gonna sound a little bit softer in the high frequency, whereas the MoFi is gonna sound a little bit more boosted somewhat in the high frequency, especially if you have a smaller room with reflections. The MoFi does not have that dip in the mid bass region, which personally I like. Now, which one would I buy? I like both of them. Personally, I think the Arendal looks better, but I like the sound of the MoFi more. So it's kind of a toss up. Either way you go, I don't think you can go wrong. And the thing that Arendal does offer is an in-home try. I don't know if it's 30 days or 60 days, but it's on their website. You can try it out and you may have to pay return shipping, but hey, at least it takes care of your peace of mind. Another one that I want to talk about is the Kef Reference One Meta, which is a, it's what, like 30% more or so? It's like about about $10,000, $10,000 per pair. The Kef Reference One Meta to me is just a, a fantastic bookshelf speaker. Very great linearity. Wherever you sit, it's going to sound pretty much the exact same. Wide vertical radiation, uh, pretty wide horizontal radiation. Again, excellent linearity, better than the Arendal, but a lot more expensive, and it doesn't get as low. Now, the Kef probably sits pretty well in that range of good compression and low distortion with the Arendal, but the main difference is going to be that the Arendal can get lower, and you don't necessarily have to have a subwoofer with the Arendal. So either one of those, I think, are great choices too, but it says something that I'm comparing a roughly $6,000 per pair speaker versus a $10,000 prepare speaker. And I think that says a lot for the Arendal speaker. Okay, with all that said, I'm gonna take off. Talk to y'all later, peace.